personable counsellors and people that I've ever met. And I have a great belief that not only will she deliver on this job, she's got a great future in politics and I look forward to working with her. And then I, I just want to say that, that um, in the mayor leads, Tim Beaumont will uh, work and continue to work as the city wellbeing and healthy weight champion, obviously, will get round to me eventually. Uh, Alice Bennett will also uh, continue in her role as heritage in design. Uh, Joanne Calvert on, on mental health, raising awareness of mental health and support. Uh, Shannon uh, Connor will work alongside uh, Frank and our future housing options. She will look at a task and finish group and review how the allocations procedures work. But as I also said, um, and, and this will be something that we will look at about starting up on a select committee on, on housing that involves uh, Councillor Radford uh, and, and, and others to engage within an area where I know he's passionate about. In terms of one of the uh, jobs that uh, I have uh, created as a, as a mayor of the I just want to take time out just to uh, pay tribute to uh, Jane Corbus, who I am making uh, an assistant mayor. Uh, and the reason why she deserves that role as assistant mayor and mayor of the I don't know anybody in this council who's been as dedicated and committed to equality and eradicating poverty, especially as our young people in this city, as Jane Corbus. I don't think I've ever met anybody. And she will continue to deliver fairness and she will also deliver on tackling poverty. And I think the the fact that she got uh, Bishop Paul Baines, uh, the citywide fairness and tackle and poverty group together at the St George's Hall with our trade union colleagues, with the voluntary sector and community uh, sector all together talking about this issue. And Jane knows the task that we face and that's why I have great confidence in nobody else who can actually help us tackle the issues that I know and you know exist in our communities. It is absolutely frightening that one in four young people are living in poverty within this city. That the number of people dependent on help that we've got limited money to give them means that we are absolutely uh, dependent on charitable contributions once again, something that I never envisaged. I know Jay has got some vision around how we work together, link up services that we do, and change things, absolutely change things. Because no longer can we stand by and allow the things to continue to happen to young people, young families, and families out everywhere across our city. I protected the neighbourhood fund to all of the wards across the city. I did that because I know that you listen and breathe and are passionate about the wards that you represent, despite what political colour you are. That's why I protected that. I will also announce and tonight that I intend to provide £10,000 additional pounds to each ward for you to actually work and tackle poverty within your area. So that you can be the listening ear and the voice of people that are reported to you who are struggling Kids who haven't got shoes who can't go to school. Kids who can't get the bus fare to go to school. People who are living without electricity because they've had the electricity turned off. Yes, we'll still keep the citizen support scheme, but this additional money that Jane will talk to you about how we're going to administer that and how you will access it. Well, that's £300,000 that will be set up for people who are desperately in need of support and help. People that you can listen to, people that you will know, people that you will know who know the people that are in that desperate position. So that's why that money will be made available. And as I say, Jane will reveal details about how you can administer that and how you will be able uh, to use that. And I'm putting that money aside and we'll also look to secure it for next year as well. That's <laughs> One of the uh, uh, things, again, that, that Jane will do is make sure that we are doing 
cross-cutting things, things that link across each and every uh, community in the city, but each and every agency across the city. Faith, non-faith, and people that just want to help. That's what we've got to galvanise, and she's the person uh, to actually do that. Uh, the other uh, male uh, lead is Lily Hinnigan, who will engage in the youth engagement and citizen engagement, and she's already done some fantastic work challenging stereotypes of young people and encouraging young people to get more involved in politics. Tim Moore will continue with organised sports and try to work with sports clubs and others to actually promote sport participation across the, the whole city. Jim Nunch will continue with the Smart Cities agenda uh, and also about energy and climate uh, issues, working alongside uh, Councillor Mumby uh, as well. And, and you know, I, I pay uh, tribute. I brought the idea of the Liverpool Lecky Company uh, and uh, Councillor Mumby, uh, Jimmy, and, and other people actually delivered that with our officers, uh, Becky Hellard, uh, Nick, all of the team here. And what an ex excellent example of a socialist council in action providing cheap electricity for the poor people. <laughs> And, and a, a piece of Mitchell will continue to do is fantastic work in parks and open spaces. Again, working with partners, not privatising, but making sure that we actually uh, use the parks and sweat the assets to make them uh, a better place for people to go to. Gary Miller is not here, he's in China. Um, he's a business and enterprise champion. He does an absolutely fantastic job. And I wish he could bottle up his energy and his experience and he'll uh, continue to, to do that. Uh, Sharon Sullivan will uh, continue in the voluntary and community sector and developing our relationships with those to actually uh, help us overcome um, the, the challenges that they face and, and helping us work with them to actually overcome uh, those challenges. A new role that I'm creating is one that when we talk about uh, inequality and when we tackle and talk about tackling in, in, inequality, it, it isn't just uh, one particular sector uh, that we need to tackle. There are huge uh, representation issues, uh, not just uh, here in the council, but across the whole city, whether it's in the teaching profession, whether it's in the business uh, community, whether it's in our shopping districts, whether it's in political life, whatever life, there is inequality in terms of not enough opportunity for people from different sectors, whether that be the Bain community, uh, whether it be disabilities, or, or whether it be gender uh, underrepresentation. It is a fact of life that those inequalities exist. I'm placing Anna Rodney in a position to tackle equality and to actually tackle those issues on our behalf, working on our behalf with other agencies to make sure that we get a fair representation of communities, all communities across the whole of the city. In relation to the other leads, Jed Woodhouse will continue his ex excellent role uh, as uh, older people and an age friendly city. Uh, and I think he's been doing a fantastic job working with partners and agencies. You only have to see the correspondence that I get uh, about Jed Woodhouse and his commitment and dedication uh, to this particular role. If anybody had any doubts that uh, this wasn't an important role within the city. I'm actually, uh, when I talked before about how we are looking at uh, the issue of tackling homelessness and rough sleeping, yes we are working with many agencies and yes we are working with uh, institutions uh, and others within the city to actually tackle it. But I've actually uh, asked uh, two people uh, together with um, Anne O'Brien who's been uh, working on, on this particular area on our behalf to actually see if we can get people with a different view uh, on homelessness and on rough sleeping, to see if we can actually get their take on it. You know, one of the things that was so inspiring and enlightening for me was going to visit in Edgbeth, an organisation that we form, an organisation that we own in terms of the property that they use, transforming choices. It is about actually helping people not only uh, taking them out of rough sleeping, actually taking them 
from a position where they are in the streets, but actually giving them hope, actually giving them a, a job prospect, actually giving them something to look forward to. So it's not just getting them off addiction, but it's actually helping them find work and housing. And that's why it's important that we don't believe, or never ever believe, that we have the only solutions, because we don't. And that's why I'm delighted that John Finnegan and Simon Witter, who both have faced challenges themselves in homelessness and mental health issues, are actually going to be male leads, working with Dan, working with our team, to actually look at ways that we can tackle rough sleeping and homelessness within our city. And I think it's that innovative approach and it's that way of thinking that's going to help us tackle some of the problems that we face moving forward. And they bring that expertise, that knowledge, that commitment, that passion, that understanding. Some people who have actually worn the T-shirts and got that experience. That's a great opportunity for us uh, moving forward. So I want to make uh, they are um, my uh, cabinet. I have uh, absolutely um, uh, no uh, doubts that they will serve the city well. The Mayor of Leeds uh, have done a fantastic job and will continue uh, to serve the city well. Uh, as I said, we will come back, I will bring back uh, some information around how we develop and look at a housing select committee in the future. Thank you, Mayor. Can I express my personal uh, congratulations? Um, as I, you referred to, I, you mentioned about Councillor Hall joining the Cabinet. It's a uh, great pleasure to, to see uh, Lana progressing in that way. And, you know, um, just congratulations from me. Thank you. Um, Tom, you wanted to come in. Look, the Mayor has given a lot of food for debate there, which we don't want to use tonight, okay? So if, if, if your question would be sharp and to the point, and the answer to likewise, um, then we can get on. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll be as quick as I possibly can. I'd just like the record set straight that we did not oppose the acquisition of the Cunard building. That's been said several times in this chamber. Um, I expect the Mayor to criticise the Green Party. That's absolutely fine, but to please try and get your facts straight before you do it. Just to, just, just to leave Bob's bottom, because don't forget I moved you because the Greens nearly had you in their grasp. Uh, I'm glad that you clarified that. That's what he said before. He said that you moved you over. That's why you were wavering, he said. But I, uh, uh, it's, uh, I'm glad, you clarified, I'm glad that you clarified it, and I'm glad to associate you with you the fact that you support the millions of pounds that we make for our city. See if you wanted a quick question. Again, the same point, but try to move on here. Yeah. Um, just to say, the Liberal Party group did a, oppose getting rid of the Earth Housing Committee, and we welcome its frustration. It is quite a big portfolio, it's quite complex, and I think it does deserve a specific committee. Um, can I say also, I think the Mayor is um, um, taking a very cautious, preventative step to actually include a committee setting back as a cabinet member. I think that's perfectly right. Um, but with that in mind, um, I think most of us would recognise community safety is one of what measures we can make to make buildings, our locations um, safer, uh, how we encourage the public uh, to participate in supporting the security uh, measures, but also um, some of the most effective um, government policies in any country to prevent terrorism has actually been engaging those minority communities who may feel alienated and bring them in. in in, into feeling part of the wider community. That's probably the most fundamental and, some, and sometimes the most difficult question. And I was wondering, uh, under your portfolios, um, would I take it, and I welcome the appointment of a Mary Lee Fremmer, uh, will the equality agenda uh, be feeding in through the cabinet member for community safety with that in mind? Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully that will be something that. Uh, goes across all, all portfolios and I absolutely agree with your point about the best way to, uh, or one of the ways, and one of the best ways to tackle uh, this type of uh, behaviour is to engage and explain uh, and involve because this affection uh, causes people to think in, in those ways and that's why it's important that we actually connect with people. And, and that's why it's important that we address isolation and make sure that people don't feel isolated 
And that includes young people, that includes people who are disadvantaged uh, because of employment opportunities, housing opportunities, all of those things. So I think it's across, uh, you know, portfolio area, but community safety and the equality belief will absolutely work hand in hand, as it will with education and all of those things as well. Skills, how we actually get more young people, uh, you know, more qualified um, teachers, black teachers from different ethnic groups, teachers with disabilities, all of those things. All of those are major challenges. So we've also got to address the fact that that's the case in shops, that's the case in, 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 in institutions within the city, including the city council. I haven't seen anybody else indicate a question, so we move on. I'll bring in uh, uh, Councillor Dean. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'm conscious that you seem to be anxious to be somewhere else, so I'll be as brief as possible. Um, item 6, can I move the recommendation that's been circulated around the Chamber? And can I point out, because it's been mentioned, sections F and section G about uh, arrangements that have been put in place to cover certain uh, functions of the authority. Can I move that recommendation, Lord Mayor? Yeah. Is that agreed? Well, then on item 7 and 8, can I move the uh, extensive recommendations in the notes in relation to political precautions and allocations and respect of appointments and select committee appointments uh, for the coming year? Agreed. Agreed. Item 9, Lord Mayor, can I move that the recommendation of the independent remuneration panel on members allowed to be approved? Is that agreed? Item 10, can I move the recommendation contained in the note? Agreed. Item 11, can I move the recommendation for appointments to the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority for 2017 18? Agreed. Item 12, appointments to Merseyside Joint Boards. Okay, agreed. Thank you, Councillor Ben. Item 13, appointments to the LGA General Assembly. Can I move that? Item 14, here that I have to say is that agreed. Move on. It's agreed. You saw me down all that. I know for a of portfolios. Appointments to outside uh, bodies and portfolios. Can I move that the outside bodies uh, attached in the appendix 4 be agreed and any outstanding appointments be deferred to the next meeting of the City Council? And in respect of those organisations, the existing appointments continue until otherwise agreed. Is that agreed? Item 15, can we agree the scrutiny power report for 2016-17? Is that agreed? And item 17, can uh, we agree the appointment of the Interim Director of Adult Social Services, Diane Askerall? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Can I thank you all for your very good uh, uh, behaviour? I'm sure this is going to continue in this manner all the way through the year. Just, just don't forget that star chart and uh, thank you very much. I declare this meeting at an end.